All right, we are ready to start chapter 12 on trigonometry. And trigonometry is one of my favorite things to introduce uh, during the year of geometry because it's new. You may have been wondering about certain buttons on your calculator where it says S-I-N, C-O-S, T-A-N for a while now. And so we finally get to introduce those ideas. And then it's a nice blend of both geometry and algebra that you're going to now use pretty much through every math course through high school. Trigonometry is going to be a very major part of it. So let's take a look here. When studying right triangles, early mathematicians noticed the pattern in the sides and angles of all right triangles that were geometrically similar. In other words, the pattern existed in all right triangles that shared the same angle measures. This discovery led to a branch of math called trigonometry. The word trigonometry comes from the Greek word meaning triangle, trigonon, and metron meaning measure and is a branch of math that studies triangles and the relationships between the lengths of their sides and the angles between those sides. So you're talking about the relationship between sides and angles, connecting the two together. And we're going to start off with right triangle trigonometry. Eventually you'll do some trigonometry in algebra 2 when you are looking at non-right triangles. But we begin with right triangles, just like our last unit on Pythagorean theorem. All right, so we've got two triangles here, two right triangles that have the same angle measures. Notice there are 90 degrees on each of them and 20 degrees, so that would leave the remaining angle as 70 degrees, but we're just going to focus in on that 20 degree angle. So let's talk about triangles with the 20 degree angle, and the 20 degree angle is going to be our reference angle. In trigonometry, you typically will be referencing one of the non-right angles. So in this case, the 20 degree angle is our reference angle. And when we reference that angle, we're going to use three words to label our triangle. The words opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. All right, you guys know what the word hypotenuse is, so I'd like you to write the word hypotenuse on each of these triangles. It's the side across from the right angle, as you guys know. So hypotenuse. Now, putting the other two words in the correct spots is very important. That's why we have a reference angle. So think about this 20-degree angle. What is the side that is opposite the 20 degree angle? So opposite that 20 degree angle, hopefully you're saying the side across from it. In other words, that short side over there. So if we're referencing the 20 degree angle, this side over here is the opposite. So I'd like you to label it opposite. And you can do that on both of these triangles. So this would be the opposite side to the 20 degree angle. And then the remaining side is the adjacent angle. Adjacent means next to. Uh, there's really two sides that are next to the 20 degrees, but we already labeled one of those as the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side would be the other side that is next to the angle that we are referencing. So that's the adjacent side, and we'll write that on our other triangle as well. All right. So these three words are going to be important for every single problem that we're going to do in trigonometry. Now let's see what we have here. We're going to do a little investigation. And so we're going to take and measure each of those sides. Now I've measured them ahead of time. If you want to take out a ruler and measure them also in centimeters to kind of check my work, you can certainly do that. But I measured the triangle one's opposite side. That was the shortest side, and I came up with 3.7 centimeters. Now, since we're rounding the tenths place, and that would be a, a millimeter, so three centimeters and seven millimeters, we might not be perfectly accurate with every single one of these, but I tried to be as precise as I could be given the measuring tool that I had. The adjacent side on that first triangle I measured out as 10.3 centimeters, and the hypotenuse I measured to be 11 centimeters. In triangle number two, did the same thing. I measured the opposite side, that short side, to be the 2.8 centimeters. I measured the adjacent side to be 7.6 centimeters. And I measured the hypotenuse to be 8.1 centimeters. All right, so here's the key to trigonometry here. We're going to be comparing two of those sides to each other. Again, we're referencing that 20 degree angle. So our words opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse came from the reference of that 20 degree angle. And so I'm going to take that opposite side and the hypotenuse and just divide them. So the opposite side was 3.7 and the hypotenuse was 11. And if you divide those two, 
you get approximately 0.34. Not exactly 0.34, but you can punch it in. Rounded, you get 0.34. If you take the adjacent side and divide it by the hypotenuse, that would be 10.3 divided by 11. And that is approximately 0.94 on our drawing. And if you take the opposite side of that first triangle and divide it by the adjacent side, you get 3.7 over 10.3 to be about 0.36. Okay? So we're just taking each one of these ratios and just dividing the two numbers that we measured back up in our previous table. And let's do the same thing for triangle 2. Now triangle 2, remember, is a smaller triangle, but it's similar because it has the same angles. So it's got congruent angles, but not congruent sides. But the fact that it's got congruent angles is key. So if I take the opposite on that one, that was 2.8 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 8.1. That was approximately 0.35. Then I had adjacent over hypotenuse, so that was 7.6 divided by 8.1, which was approximately 0.94. And then I had opposite divided by adjacent, so 2.8 divided by 7.6, and I got 0.37. All right, what is true about the ratios of both of these triangles? Now, like I said, my measurements were probably not perfectly accurate. I tried to be as precise as I could be, given the ruler that I had that just had centimeters and millimeters on it. But, you know, this one... Right here might have been 3.75 centimeters. It's a little bit hard to tell because I didn't have anything more precise than a millimeter. But what I want you to do is compare, because I do think it's good enough. Compare what we got for the ratio between the opposite and hypotenuse on triangle number one, and compare it to what we got as a ratio between the opposite and hypotenuse on triangle two. 0 0.34, 0.35. Hopefully you're saying, wow, those are pretty close together. I wonder if that's true for the others. Well, let's compare again. Adjacent divided by hypotenuse on the triangle 1 got me 0.94, and adjacent divided by hypotenuse on triangle 2 got me 0.94. So those are exactly the same. And then taking a look at opposite divided by adjacent on triangle 1 and opposite divided by adjacent on triangle 2, again, very close, 0.36 versus 0.37, only one hundredth apart. So the idea here is that these ratios, if we could measure them perfectly, are going to be the same on both of the triangles that contain the same angles. Okay? They are the same for both triangles. And... I'm going to put little quotations around the same because I didn't get them to be exactly the same. But this was sort of an investigation that you're determining what you think is the relationship here. I got these two to be exactly the same, but the other two were just very, very close. I'm telling you right now that they should be exactly the same, and they are if we have the most precise measurement tools possible. So we're going to take a look now on the next page of why this is helpful and how we are going to use it. So you'll just have to wait a few minutes to figure that out.